Welcome back to another episode of the 1% Life Podcast. I'm your host, Coach JT. This information is for educational and informational purposes only and is solely a self-help tool for your own use. I'm not providing medical, psychological, fitness, or nutrition therapy. You should not use this information to diagnose or treat any health problem or illness without consulting your own medical practitioner. As always, results of any kind will vary based on each person's unique circumstances, capacity, and work ethic. Anybody that's in a space where they work one-on-one with somebody, especially in the healthcare space, doctors or dietitians or psychologists or psychiatrists or chiropractors or social workers or whatever, all have these people that are just really unforgettable. It's something about them or their personality, the interaction, the circumstances, the outcome, whatever it is, that just makes them unforgettable for years to come. And I had a client like this back in 2015 that I worked with for a couple of years. This is when I was doing clinical nutrition, so to put it in context, I was at the doctor's office and I was seeing between 15 and 30 patients a day, primarily focused on weight loss and disease management, cutting weight and getting them off meds. This was an amazing guy. I actually became really good friends with him, early 40s. And he'd come in and we'd talk about new motorcycles and his traveling and obstacle course racing and all of his new biohacks. He was major into this. Always add new stuff, always looking for the next thing, always reading and bringing articles and talking about the science. He just loved it. And he took all kinds of supplements, 60 to 70 pills a day, organic this, only certain kinds of water that he would drink, whole house filtration systems. He'd set an alarm and get up in the middle of the night and take growth hormone, vitamins at certain times of the day, no fluoride in his toothpaste, only organic veggies that he could source on the weekend from the local farmer's market, raw coconut oil on his skin, no lotion from the store, bone broth, lemon first thing in the morning, slept on a grounding pad, only wore certain kinds of shoes. You get the drift. And he worked out seven days a week, religiously, seven days a week, very rarely missed unless he was injured or traveling. And he did all kinds of crazy workouts, stuff that he'd make up, stuff he'd hear about, stuff he'd come up with, different exercises, different workout splits, different breathing techniques, post-workout supplements, shakes, protein timing, intra-workout supplements, all kinds of stuff. And although we usually talked about the biohacking stuff and his next obsession and motorcycle or his trip to Belize or whatever, he actually came to me for nutrition and training. He just didn't listen all that much. And the reason he didn't is because he didn't believe that the basics that I was talking about made as much of a difference as all these biohacking things that he was focused on. So I saw him for two or three years, pretty consistently, once, sometimes twice a week for that entire time. And he drank pretty heavily on the weekends. He didn't eat enough protein, did a lot of veggies and fruits, ate too much sugar and carbs, especially when he was traveling, ate out, he was injured frequently, had joint issues, brittle bones, bad gut health, had too much body fat and he'd lose it and he'd gain it back and he'd lose it and he'd gain it back. He'd throttle 15 to 20 pounds all the time, but he never really got lean and stayed there. He lost muscle mass because he stopped doing heavy strength training and didn't eat enough protein and, you know, traveled a lot. And he ended up dying. And everybody was shocked. Just blown away. Still to this day, have no idea why he would have ever died. He watched everything. He spent so much money and so much time educating himself and learning and taking these supplements and doing everything right. And he didn't even drink bad water and all these things. If he died, we're all in trouble. Right? We're all doomed. Nobody can do anything right. So let's just stop trying and just live our lives and drink and eat in excess and do whatever we want to do. There's just no hope. Was he focused on the wrong thing? Was his focus misplaced? If you listen to all these experts online, a lot of them chemists, psychologists, psychiatrists, chiropractors, neuroscientists, doctors, people with less experience than the average gym bro with regards to nutrition and exercise. Thousands of life or death recommendations, new biohacks and magic supplements, loads of other crap. It's hard for somebody like me to keep up with. It's in the know. I live in it. I'd have been educating myself for decades. I know the BS when I see it most of the time, but it's still hard to keep up with. How the heck is the average person that doesn't understand what macros are supposed to determine what's actually legit or not? It's a big part of what keeps people focused on all this crap, all tangled up in all these little details, worrying about the 0.5% while the other 99.5% kills them. 
And freaking social media has become the breeding ground for crap like this. It's all you see. Stupid crap like blending up your bananas makes them worse than eating them. Or peanuts have mold on them. Don't ever eat them again. Or drink 30 grams of protein within 5 minutes of waking up and then do 30 minutes on the bike like your life depends on it. And watch fat just melt off of you. B.S. But then in the same breath, they talk about how everyone was so much healthier hundreds of years ago. Before we had all this crap. Before all this biohacking science. Before all these supplements. And look, I understand it's good for views and shock factor and people are making a lot of money on social media doing it. It's a lot easier to go buy resveratrol and NMN than it is to do cardio and strength training. But if you look at these people that are giving this advice, what's their experience? How many people have they worked with one-on-one? What do they really know? Right? If it's a neuroscientist, he's brilliant. He's very smart. Not arguing that. How much does he know about nutrition and exercise? How much actual experience do they have with themselves or other people one-on-one? How much of the crap have they just memorized and regurgitating to get views? How much of this crap has studies or real data with real people instead of a mouse in a lab? How many people have they actually healed, changed, educated, really helped? What's their history? Or look at them themselves. If you ask these people how to build your nutrition, how would they respond? If you ask them to calculate your macros, what would they say? If you ask them, hey, I want to cut body fat without losing muscle mass, would they know how to do that? Or how about build me a strength training program and teach me to train properly? Or cure my inflammatory issues without having magic potions and meds? What should I really eat? How much should I eat? How often should I eat? What's the best food types to eat? Some of the basics. How much cardio should I be doing? Or, you know, help me sleep better without grounding pads, watches, hot showers, and special tea. So I'm going to talk about some of this stuff. I'm going to tell you guys what really matters. And in a way that you can understand it and implement it immediately. So how many of you guys are paying attention to this little stuff? Like don't eat gluten because it causes everything. Or red number 40 because it causes ADD. Or artificial sweeteners because it causes cancer. Or blended bananas. Right? And to that point, blending, by the way, allows you to consume much more faster. So it is worse in that aspect. If I can drink a whole banana in two gulps instead of eating it, of course I'm going to get more of a spike in blood sugar faster. Or tap water. You don't drink tap water. Only drink hydrogen water. Now, I agree with a lot of this stuff. But it's the order that people do this stuff that really, really becomes the issue. You can't have regular toothpaste. It's Diet Coke because the acephane potassium is bad for you. It is, but how much does it take to be bad for you? For it to be toxic, actually have toxic effects, you're talking about drinking 1,600 cans a day, 500 liters-ish. And what about coffee creamer? They got seed oils, don't have that. Don't have table salt because it has aluminum in it. You get heavy metal poisoning. Don't do sugar-free gum. It'll give you headaches and cause ADD and other, all, all kinds of other problems. Or if you get too much sun, it's going to kill you. Or if you don't get enough sun, it's going to kill you. Sunscreen is dangerous and causes cancer. But if you don't wear sunscreen, you're going to get cancer and you're going to die that way. You can't use lotion or your estrogen's going to spike. But if you don't use lotion, your skin's going to get dry and become susceptible to all kinds of foreign crap because of the cracks in your skin. It's confusing. You know, it's like, hey, get up at 427 in the morning, drink 30 grams of protein within five minutes, immediately do 30 minutes of hardcore cardio, try not to puke, then do a cold dip at 42.365 degrees for exactly three minutes and 36 seconds, and then don't dry off, run outside, hold your eyes open, stare directly at the sun for 63 seconds, close them for five seconds, repeat again, then do your red light therapy for 11 minutes, but you got to be standing west because of the polarity of the earth. And then sit on the floor with no clothes on. Put your butt cheeks on the floor to connect to Mother Earth. And you do that while you play some binaural beats at 365 hertz. It's got to be 365 though. Nothing else works. Do deep breathing while you're doing that for 30 reps. Then you can get dressed. But you can only wear cotton clothes until 12 o'clock and then it's polyester. And then after you do that, take two tablespoons of sodium, 500 milligrams of L-arginine, five grams of creatine monohydrate, 80 grams of caffeine, two tablespoons of red beet powder, stir it in five ounces of warm water, and then go do your strength training. If you do it just like that, it'll add 365 years to your life, maybe more. And if you don't, you're going to die on Thursday. How do you even know what's what? It's confusing. It's scary. It makes people give up. 
If you thought that's what you had to do, it's an immediate no. Some of those things that I just mentioned are legit. They're good. Right? Like cold therapy. I love it. But when do you do it? When does it really matter? People focus on all that stuff like eating sauerkraut for your gut biome, but they're drinking alcohol on the weekends. Lemon water as soon as they get up. That's going to cure everything. Only free rain jags. I take vinegar. I don't do any coffee for 45 minutes when I get up in the morning. I take NMN and resveratrol. DNA and blood testing to see what kind of foods I should have. Wearing a continuous glucose monitor. Checking my ketones all the time. Now I can get behind a lot of that stuff, guys, and I do a lot of it. But people focus on all these little things that are easy, and then they don't do regular cardio. They don't do regular strength training. They don't track their macros. They don't watch their nutrition or their portions or their meal frequency or their food types. They won't pay for a coach or to get any real education with nutrition, but they'll spend $10,000 on a you know hydrogen in-home water system. Won't pay for a gym membership or good beef, but they'll have a $1,200 truck payment, eat out five days a week, and eat processed food and lunch meat and packaged garbage, snack on candy and junk food at work, drink wine, do shots on the weekend. Here's my point. You got to stop worrying about the splinter in your finger if there's a freaking log in your eye. It's misplaced attention. The splinter in your finger does matter. You don't want it to stay there. But it's not what you should focus on if there's a log in your eye. It's like going to McDonald's and going to the drive-thru and ordering a Big Mac and fries and an apple pie and ice cream and supersizing the whole thing. And then when you get to the drink, you start stressing out. What about the acephane potassium and the Diet Coke? Should I get a regular one? I don't know what's best. It's a big decision. You'd be better off to get either one. It doesn't matter if you're eating all the other garbage. All right, so let's go over what really matters. I want you guys to imagine a pyramid. It's the way I've seen it in my mind's eye for a long time. This is the easiest way to think about it. I want you to think about three sections of a pyramid. The foundation, the middle, and the tip. What's the most important part of that pyramid? What's the most important part of that structure? It's the foundation. It's that bottom piece. You can't start with the top and work your way down. It doesn't work that way. It's impossible. So what's even more important than the foundation? If you were going to start building a pyramid, what's the most important part of building that? It's the cornerstone. If your cornerstone is wrong, if it's not exactly right, the whole entire thing's going to be off. It may look right in the beginning, and then about halfway through, you're going to realize the whole thing's off 15 degrees, and you've got to start the whole thing over. That cornerstone is discipline, consistency, and the right blueprint. Without those, nothing that I go over from here forward matters. You can have all the data in your head. If you're not disciplined and you're not consistent, it doesn't matter. And if you're really disciplined and really consistent, but you're doing the wrong things, aka wrong blueprint, it's not going to work. So at the bottom, first part of that pyramid right? You get the cornerstone right, discipline, consistency, and the right blueprint, and now the rest of the foundation. This is the basics, guys. This will always be 80% of your progress, 80% of your results, 80% of your change, 80% of your health. Nothing else matters if these aren't on point. So here's the basics. Start doing strength training five to six days a week. And here's the reason I say five or six days a week and not two or three. One, it's probably not enough. But two, and the bigger issue is it teaches you to procrastinate. If you tell yourself you're going to work out three days a week and you say, hey, I'll do it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday rolls around. You've had a hard day. Eh, I'll do it Tuesday. All right, I've only got to do three days this week. I can do it later in the week. No big deal. Tuesday rolls around. Another bad day. I've still got time. I've got five days left. I only got to do three. I can work out this weekend. And you put it off and you put it off and you put it off and then something really comes up. And you can't do it, and now you tell yourself it's justified. Well, I couldn't because, you know, I had a family emergency and had to go take care of something. If it's five days a week, there just is no argument. You just go every day. That's how you build consistency. That's how you build discipline. Same thing with cardio. Start doing cardio five to six days a week. Do one in the morning, one at night. Do them both at the same time. It doesn't matter. How much doesn't matter at this point? Just show up. You don't need to worry about what type of cardio you're doing if you're not even doing it. You don't need to worry about how long you're doing cardio if you're not even showing up. It doesn't matter. So reason the foundation has to exist first. 
Then start watching your food types. Don't worry about your calories or your meal frequency or any of that. Just get your food types down first. Animal protein and fat. Stop eating out. Stop having fast food. And then cut out sugar. Cut out binge meals. Cut out processed foods. Cut out the garbage that you know you shouldn't be eating. Everybody knows what it is. It's all the snacks and the chips and the junk. Just about anything you could buy at a convenience store. Carbs, sugar, snack foods. Cut them out. Get your water intake up. Start drinking 50% of your body weight in ounces. Sleep eight hours a night. Be consistent with your bedtime. Start going to bed at the same time every night. Don't worry about your quality of sleep. Don't worry about taking supplements. Don't worry about cutting out blue light. Don't worry about you know making sure it's 68 degrees in the house and doing all that. Foundation first. 10,000 steps a day is next. Stop drinking alcohol. And when I say stop drinking, cut it out 100%. Stop telling yourself I can have a little bit. What is a little bit? Zero. A little bit of alcohol is not healthy. And the last thing I'll tell you to do is pay for a freaking coach. Pay for somebody to educate you. Pay for somebody to build your macros and teach you how to eat and teach you how to train and teach you what's important and teach you what's not. And then once you build that strong foundation and your 80% is in place, now you can move to the 15%, which is the middle. Things like types of ingredients. Again, types of ingredients are irrelevant if you're eating out. You can't track them. You don't know what you're having. You're just randomly eating. The same thing for varying your fats. That'd be next. Have a variety of fats. Doesn't matter if you're not even eating them or don't know what you're having. Start doing progressive strength training. Start doing a variety of cardio conditioning. Again, doesn't matter if you're not going to the gym at all. Doesn't matter if you're not doing it at all. You can't do a variety of strength training if you're not even doing strength training. You've got to show up and start doing it first. Foundation first. Variety of protein types. Now start worrying about your calories. How many calories should I have a day of the food types that I've picked? What are my macros? How how much of it should be protein versus carbs versus fats? What should my meal frequency be? Now that stuff matters. Only if you're eating the right foods. You can vary your meal frequency and vary your caloric intake and try to vary your macros, but if you're eating random foods, it doesn't matter. Start meal prepping. Start worrying about the quality of sleep. Take the next step. 68 degrees in the house. Stop looking at my phone 30 minutes before I go to bed. Maybe I should be taking melatonin. What's my magnesium level like? Is the room dark enough? All these little things that will help your sleep. Start doing grass-fed meat. Start eliminating seed oils. Those are the 15% items. None of those things matter if you're not doing the other things. If you are doing the other things, now they all really matter. But it has to be in that order. And then once you get those down, now you move to the tip of the pyramid. This is where I'm at. And this is where people that have been doing it for a long time are at. The top 5% all the way up to the top 1% or half of 1%. Things that don't matter at all unless you have the other two pieces right. Things like grounding yourself. It is healthy. It's always good. It'd be good for anybody to do. But taking your time to focus on grounding yourself every day for 20 minutes when you're not working out and you're eating like crap and you're drinking alcohol and you're not doing cardio and your sleep is off and your water is off, it's worrying about 5% while the other 95% kills you. Now you can start cutting out all artificial sweeteners, making your own tallow, make your own butter. Start focusing on the type of water, right? Do you do hydrogen water? Good idea, by the way. Start doing your deep breathing. Buy local products. Get healthy brands. Worry about your types of uh, shoes. Start wearing barefoot shoes. Worry about your VO2 max and start tracking that. Are you really going to start looking at your VO2 max and start tracking your VO2 max and trying to increase that if you're not even showing up to do cardio? Start adding collagen, resveratrol, NMN. Do you want to take creatine? Should you be taking liver tabs? Those are the little things you can start to add. They do matter, but not first. In the end, you need to work on the cornerstone first, discipline, consistency, and the right blueprint. Then the foundational items. Then the middle items. Then you can worry about all the little things, all the biohacks, all the things that don't move the needle unless everything else is right. You wouldn't build the top of the pyramid first and then work your way down. It just doesn't work that way. I can give you the right blueprint. I can save you years of trial and error. I can cut through all the crap and all the pointless nonsense for you. I can help you learn self-discipline. 
I can provide accountability to improve consistency, but I can't make you want to do it. I'm out. For more content, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. See you.